Hello, and welcome to another edition of Rock's Garage. I'm your host, Kevin. On this episode, we're gonna show you how to install a time delay brake switch, part number LGT-164, on this 2013 Yamaha Drive. Now, before we get started, let's show you what's included with your LGT-164, as well as all of the tools necessary to perform the installation. Now, here's a look at all the components included with the time delay brake switch. Now, first, we have the brake switch mounting bracket, the plunger assembly, our sub harness for the brake switch, the pin and spacers, and lastly, the time delay relay itself. Now that we've showed you everything that's included, let's take a look at the tools that we'll be using for the installation. The tools that we will be using for our installation today are as follows. We have a trim removal tool, flathead screwdriver, some needle nose pliers, a pair of cutters, a pair of tin snips, ball peen hammer, 12 millimeter socket, and a cordless impact. Now that we've shown you all of the tools that we'll be using, we're ready to begin our installation. Now before we begin, it's very important that if you're working with a gas cart, you place your key switch in the off position, and if you're working with an electric cart, you want to make sure that your tow run switch is in the tow position. Now this is because since we're going to be working around the pedal area, you don't want to accidentally engage the accelerator pedal, causing the cart to lunge forward while you're working on it. Now once you've secured the cart, the first thing we're going to do is to remove the two-piece rivets that are securing the factory floor mat in place. Once all the rivets have been removed, we can remove the factory floor mat and retain that as well as the rivets as they will be reinstalled later in the process. The next thing we need to do is to remove the access panel of the pedal group area. Now, in order to remove this access panel, you simply just need to lift it up and away from the floor of the cart. Once removed, it will expose the entire pedal group, allowing us to install our brake switch relay. Now, the next thing we're going to do is to install our mounting bracket. Now, the mounting bracket should have the notch out facing towards the rear of the cart when properly installed. Now, before we can install the mounting bracket, we have to cut off the rear tab, as once you place the mounting bracket in the pedal compartment, this rear tab will actually be in the way, obstructing the proper installation of our mounting bracket. Once you've removed the rear tab from the mounting bracket, we can then install the mounting bracket by removing the two bolts located towards the rear of the pedal compartment. Once removed, we're going to align the holes on our mounting bracket with the holes in the rear of the pedal compartment and reinstall the factory hardware. Now the next thing we want to do is to install the plunger assembly into the mounting bracket. Now to do this, we're just going to press the plunger assembly into the mounting bracket until it snaps into place. Now if you need to make any adjustments on the plunger assembly, you can simply spin the nut on the threaded portion of the plunger assembly until you have it at the right position. Now our next step is to remove the pin assembly from our factory brake switch. Now in order to do this, we're going to remove the cotter pin first and then slide the pin assembly out of the factory brake switch. Once removed, you can discard the pin assembly and cotter pin as they will not be reused. Next thing I'm going to do is install our new pin assembly and secure it in place using the new cotter pin. Now you'll notice it comes with some provided spacers that you may or may not use depending on how it sits once installed into the brake switch. Once you have the pin assembly installed, the next thing you want to do is to attach the spring from the plunger assembly to the pin assembly. Now, in order to do this, you're going to place the spring around the groove that's in the pin itself. Now, once you have the spring attached, the next thing we're going to do is to complete our wiring. Now, first up, we're going to take the sub harness for our brake switch and plug that in to the connector from our wiring harness. Next, we're going to take the time delay relay and we're going to hook the wires up to our deluxe harness as well as to the wires that are coming off of the plunger assembly. Now, it's important to note that when you're running these wires, you want to keep them away from any moving parts. Now, our wiring connections are going to go as follows. We want to take the black wire from the time delay relay and connect it to the black wire coming off of our light kit deluxe harness. 
Next, we're gonna take the brown wire from our time delay relay and connect that to the brown wire coming off of our deluxe harness as well. Now our black wire coming off of our deluxe harness is gonna to attach to the black wire off of our plunger assembly. And lastly, the red wire from the time delay relay is gonna to go to the red wire off of our plunger assembly. And once you have all of your wires properly connected, the next thing we need to do is to secure our time delay relay as well as any excess wiring to the wiring harness that's in our pedal compartment. Again, being sure to keep any of our wiring away from any moving parts. Now before we reinstall our pedal compartment cover, you first want to check and verify that everything is functioning properly. Now first, we want to depress our brake pedal to make sure that our plunger assembly is fully engaging. Once you see that it's engaging, you want to then release the brake pedal to ensure that it also will disengage. Now you also want to verify that your wiring connections are correct by engaging your brake pedal switch and verifying that your brake lights are functioning properly. Once you've done this, we can then reinstall the pedal compartment cover. With our pedal compartment cover now in place, we can reinstall the factory floor mats and then secure it in place using the original two-piece rivets that we removed earlier in the process. Now that you have your cart fully reassembled and you've tested and verified everything functions properly, that'll complete the installation of our time delay brake switch, part number LGT164 on our 2013 Yamaha Drive. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.